Hello guys, welcome back. In this Jetpack Compose tutorial, we'll learn about animations API and how to use them properly. We'll focus on animated visibility and animate as a state and how to customize them to reflect your app needs. Now let's get started. So we are going to create here a new file. So this we are going to call it home. And inside here, let's create here a new composable and we're going to call this main screen. Now, inside here, we have to create a state so that we can animate. So we're going to use this state in order to animate and we are going to call this visible. So we are going to create here a column so that we can structure our, our code and inside here we are going to create an if statement so if this is going to be visible then we want to add a text inside here and now let's create here a button so that we can use to toggle between animations so inside this on click here we want to we want to change the state so we are going to negate the value here. And inside here, we can pass in a text and this text is going to be animate. Also, we can try to pass in here, modify in order to align this to the end. So now we have created here, let's call this main screen inside here our main activity. So we are going to call this main screen. Now let's try here and run our application and see how it's going to behave. Now let's press this button here. So in order to animate that visibility changes, we have to use a composable functions and in Jitpa Compose it's really simple. It's just replacing this if statement with the animated visibility. And as you can see here, we're getting here an error and we have to add this experiment to API. So we have to re reference these classes of the animation APIs and they can be added new features or removed entirely. So this is just a word of caution. So right now let's try and run our application and see if there is changes. Now let's press this animate button. As you can see now, it's just coming from the top and sliding down and this is the power of Jetpack Compose. So we can try to customize this in our preference. So let's do this right now. So in order to customize that animation visibility, so there are a bunch of parameters which this animated visibility provides. So as you can see here, we have this inter and it's a inter transaction and exit transaction. And this API provide several different inter and exit transactions which are built in and you can just try to use them. So let's navigate here and create the inter transaction. So inside here there are different if you go to the Google documentation you can see these transactions. So we can have the slide in for example here we can have the fade we have the fade in and also we can specify here the exit with the fade out. As you can see here, it's just really simple to customize and you can try here to add other, other transactions. For example, here we can add the expand horizontally. And also here we can add the shrink horizontally. Now, if we try to run our application, you can see the changes inside our view. Now let's press this animate button here and see, as you can see now it's sliding from this top left corner. And if we press this, it slides out from this and it fades out. Now, as you have seen here, we can really customize this easily and we can further customize this also. As you can see here, there are different parameters which we can pass inside here. As you can see, you have the initial float value which you want to start to fade out or fade in. And we have another variable which is called the animation spec. And we're going to talk this in more details in 
later in this video so let's add here the animation speak so for example here we can provide the we can use a twin so we are going to speak about this twin later in this video as you can see here we can provide the duration of this animation so for example we can provide here for one second and also if you want to delay this 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 animation for example here we can provide just like 50 mils a second and if we try to rerun our application you can see now let's press this animate here and as you can see that the fed in is just delayed for a certain amount of time now this was all about animating visibilities so what if we wanted to animate the changes in colors or changes in size of an object and animating the content changes so there are other composables which are built in by these apis you can try and use them so right now let's try and use the animate as a state composables which are really just good in order to animate so we are going to create here another object and this composable is going to be called my object as you can see inside here we are just using a surface and this surface has the size the padding and the op absolute offset value and the offset value is going to offset this the y value so we want to create a movement between one point to another point so we are going to use this to animate the offset so in order to animate this we are going to remove this animated visibility because we are not going to use it anymore so now in order to do that we have to create a state so inside here we are going to create an enum class which is going to hold up our state and we are going to call this so we have here a start a start state and and a state so we are going to use this as our our state and inside here now we can try and remove this because we we are going to use that the, the box state. And we can try to change this box state inside here. So we are going just to, we're going to use a when statement. So when this box state, So now basically here we are just swapping these values so if it isn't start we want to change the state to end and if it's end we change the state to start so now we are done with this button inside here now we can try to animate these boxes so we can provide here the box so we can use this my object inside here now we want to create a, a state that we can use to offset these values so inside here now we can create another variable so this is going to be the let's just create outside here so we want to create this the offset and it's just going to be the value of dp so now we want to use the animate as float we want to use this animate dp as a state and we want to provide a target value so now we are going to use the if statement that if this box is going to be So if this one is going to be at the start, we want to return a 5 dp offset. Else we are going to return here a, a 300 dp offset. So let's pass in here our target value and then we are going to pass in the offset value. Now let's try and rerun our application C. So now we want to move this box from this position to this position and let's try to animate this. Now, as you can see, the box is moving toward these two positions, the start and finish the position. So we can try to customize this and provide is in and other ways. So let's start with a spring. Now, in order to change that default animation, which we have seen, we can try to customize this by using the, the animation specification. As earlier, this animation specification stores the animation, including the data type. So for example, here we can provide that animation specification and inside here now we can pass in. Now we are going to start with the spring. Let's see here, this is spring. 
So inside this spring function, as you can see here, we have the damping ratio. Also, we have the stiffness. So the damping ratio, this is the amount of oscillation, and this is just a float from zero to one. So you can try to provide your value or you can use the built-in. Also, we have the stiffness. This defines the time or the amount of time which the animation is going to run. Also, we have the visibility threshold. So the time when the animation is going to be stopped. Now let's try here and pass in now the now the damping ratio and this damping ratio here we can use the and we can use here the high bouncy let's go with high and also you can provide here for example stiffness and this is the amount of time so for example here we can use this medium or we can go with this high so it's going to take this time and it's going to bounce up and you can pass in the visibility threshold but we're going to leave it so let's try and relearn our application also let's change this offset let's change this offset here of this object and we are going to change this from not from y we are going to change this from x value let's try and relearn our application and see so right now we have changed the offset position. We are going from this point to this point. So we are going from the X axis and not the Y axis. So let's try and animate here. Now, as you can see here, it is just bouncing around and we have used the high bouncing option. However, this animation gives us a little room of control on how we are going to animate this. So there are other these functions which you can use. And the next one, which is twin, let's see how we are going to use this twin. So let's use the twin animation, which is going to give us a, a room for control of our animation. So twin function here provides the duration, the delay mills and uh, easing curve. As you can see here, the duration of the animation specification and also the amount of time in mills that the animation waits before starting and also the easing curve that interpolate between start and end state. So we can provide here, for example, the duration mills and here we can specify, for example, 1000. So we are going to 1000 millisecond, which is equivalent to one second. Also we can provide here the delay mills. So we are going to delay this by just 50 milliseconds. And also we can provide the easing curve. Now here easing, there are a bunch of, of built-in easing. As you can see, we have here the linear easing. And also we have, for example, here, let's pass in the linear linear out slow easing in so let's try and relearn this up and see now let's press here animate now as you can see here it is starting fast and then here at the middle is slowing down then going fast also so this one is going to interpolate inside the curve and you can provide your own custom animations here for example here this linear easing, if you press Ctrl Q, you can see that is using the cubic BZ easing in, which you can use to provide yourself. So for example, here we can use this. And now let's rerun. So now let's press here, animate. Now. As you can see here, it is going slowly, then going really fast. So this was just a simple way which you can use the twin animation. Let's try also another animation, which is the keyframe animation. So now let's use the keyframe animation function. So we can try to change this and we have been using this DP every time. So we want to change the data type. And for example, here we can use a float. So we can use the animate float as a state. So we are going to change also the data type here and this we are going to specify here to be a float. And we are going to change this because we want to increase the size of the object. So we are going to call this a scale in our point here and we are getting here an error because we are returning a DP. So for example, here we want this to be one F at this point and when it is, when it is been in a finished state, we want this to be, for example, here 10 times the, the actual size. And now we can change this my object here and because we don't need this anymore. So inside this my object here, we can set the offset value to a default value of zero DP. And also we can add here a new value, which is called the scale. 
and this scale is going to take up the float and now inside this modifier here we can add a scale function and we can provide that scale data which we want now if we come inside here this my object and we can try now to use the scale now we want to use here keyframe animation so we are going to use this tween so inside this keyframe animation we have this scope here and it has a data type of float and inside here we have the power of using the like the twin but with more more customization options so for example here we can use the duration we can provide here the duration for example we want our animation to last for example here we want to use the 1000 milliseconds and also we have the power of adding here the keyframes so for example at a certain point we want this to be in a certain in a certain position and so for example here we will use 5f then we can use this art and this at, as you can see here, it adds a keyframe so that animation value will be this at the timestamp which I've specified here. So for example, here we want this to be at five and we can try to add is in. For example, here we can use this width and this width adds an easing for the interval stated. So for example, here we have provided this interval here and we want to is in. So we can provide here, for example, at this, is in we can use the fast fast out slow in and also we have the power of adding the the delay the delayed meals so for example here we can use just this 50 milliseconds so that we can delay the animation to get started and right now we can try to rebuild our project and see now let's scale things up and as you can see here now it's scaling so guys let's leave it here and as you have seen we have been animating a certain value at one point but you can try to animate two values for example if you want to scale and change the color simultaneously and that is another api which is called the transition api and there are so much more which we have not covered in this video so if you want more videos about this just comment down below and i'll make a next video so if you find this video helpful please don't forget to provide a like and subscribe for more videos Thank you. See you next time.